we have been conducting a uh, campaign for Freedom of Panorama in Estonia for three years now, and we think we can share some experiences. If I know how to make this work. Yep. As you certainly know, Freedom of Panorama is a freedom to make pictures of permanent public art and share those without acquiring permits from the authors or paying them. What's public art? Well, architecture, sculptures, murals, graffiti. Usually, Freedom of Panorama excludes advertising and infographics, just like audiovisual works. So this is Atomium in Belgium. Both images come from 2006. Belgium finally got Freedom of Panorama in 2016. Some European countries have universal freedom of panorama, including both commercial and non-commercial. Non-commercial only can be found mostly in the Eastern Europe. No freedom of panorama at all is seen mostly in the Southern Europe, but also France, which got an entirely nominal pseudo-freedom last year. Uh, what's the problem with commerciality? The legal border between commercial and non-commercial uses and users uh, does not match with the borders in people's minds. The simplest example, if I step outside the door and take a photo of the Stalin's Palace of Culture in Warsaw Midtown, uh, when I put it on Facebook, I'm bound by a user agreement that allows the platform to use my photo for advertising purposes, which is a commercial activity while leaving me responsible for the legality of my content, the photo, which is okay in Poland, but not in Estonia. And this map shows you how the freedom of panorama looks in Europe. And this light green means that uh, uh, photos of buildings are allowed, but uh, not uh, the other forms of art. Yellow is for non-commercial and red non so, none whatsoever. So, uh, copyright is complicated, and in each country, Freedom of Panorama 2 is littered with weird little clauses. For example, the uh, demand for permanence, it is almost universal, except, for example, in the upcoming bill draft in Ukraine. Uh, the buildings versus sculptures thing, sculptures are uh, usually covered by Freedom of Panorama, but not in most of Scandinavia and Russia. Uh, Three-dimensional versus two-dimensional art. Three-dimensional copies are not allowed in, for example, Austria, Switzerland, Lithuania, Serbia, Czech Republic. Uh, two-dimensional art itself cannot be copied in Moldova. The place of photographing is uh, interpreted differently in uh, Germany and Austria. Audio and video are generally not covered, except in Mexico, for example. And public interiors usually are excluded, except in Great Britain, Netherlands, Austria, Portugal, well. As you can see, nothing is universal, nothing can be expected, intuition can't be trusted. So, uh, why is non-commerciality a problem? Blame all this fancy stuff, computers, the internet and cell phones, if we all were amishes, we would have no problems. Fifty years ago, most people didn't even have a chance to effectively break uh, the copyright laws. Now, everyone can be an author and a publisher, sharing their creations with the whole world instantly. But even when we do not earn any money ourselves, our communication platforms are commercial and they make money. We have Facebook, Instagram, Flickr, Twitter, there are third sector commercial activities and paid education from kindergartens to universities. So, uh, since 1992, when we got our own copyright law, instead of the previous Soviet one, Freedom of Panorama in Estonia has been non-commercial only, just like in several other former Soviet bloc countries. Copyright reform was prepared since 2009 yet um, died due to the political changes and being an unattractive agenda in 2015.
15. Can't win the elections on that one. Dum, dum, da -dum, dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. There have been some public discussions on copyright, yet freedom of panorama has never been an is issue itself. Nobody knows, nobody cares. Not to the users, not to the politicians, not even the lawyers and law enforcement. So, we are Wikipedians. If we can't show any buildings or sculptures of public art, unless the author has been dead for 70 years, we get very annoyed. And while most people do not care or even know about any specific clauses in copyright, Wikipedians tend to be rather scrupulous about it. After all, we are responsible for a global encyclopedia that must work in every country all over the world. We cannot risk bringing it down because of a copyright infringement. So, uh, now about our strategy in Estonia. Research, research, research. If you are not a lawyer, you have to compensate it by work. We started by meeting with the authors and asking what do they want. Mostly, authors are not actually bothered by Freedom of Panorama, as they do not earn much money from the photos of public art. But they do want to be attributed, so they will be known and people will order new art. Nobody knows anything about copyright. You have to explain everything, again and again. If somebody attacks you, very good. Respond in media, talk about different aspects. European initi initiatives, court cases, historical background, be clear, sensible and sharp. We have talked to the officials and ministries, all kinds of departments and organizations, many times more than they would have wanted. Talks with politicians, just like in media, repetition works. Nobody remembers your issue if you don't remind it. And people always change, coalitions fall apart, new people need new explanations. At the center of it all is uh, an official draft bill we wrote. We weighed the options, discussed all the issues with everyone concerned, and tried to limit the change in the law to a minimum. Every word you change can become a hindrance. So, focus. And yes, no one is going to write it for you. Even if you hire someone, they most likely will not know all the details as well as you do. So, the results. Right now, on this very moment, our bill is discussed in the Cultural Committee of Estonian Parliament. It is not a priority for them, but the committee supports it and we shall step up on a hearing on October 10th. Most likely, the bill will reach the Parliament floor in uh, close months or perhaps even in weeks. Then again, well, who knows? General understanding is slowly rising. You speak about the same thing for three years and some people already start recognizing the keywords. Strangely, we ha have become the experts. Media cites our blog posts and even our colleagues in the university turn to us for explanation and help in copyright issues. And we are working on international cooperation, starting a platform for sharing strategic and tactical knowledge between Wikimedia chapters in Estonia, Ukraine and South Africa, all of which are currently campaigning for freedom of panorama. The tentative name for this effort is rather ironic. Wiki loves copyright. And for our uh, mascot, we have chosen a little handmade knitted uh, Cthulhu monster. So, some general lessons. The reason we have been talking about all this is that the lessons learned from our campaign reach much farther than just uh, freedom of panorama or copyright. Most likely, the same approach can be used whenever you work on influencing the social and political environment we all have to work in. So, no one knows more than you do. Don't think everybody is the expert and you are not. If you work hard on a specific issue that nobody cares about, you will very soon be the one that know knows most about it. And the actual experts recognize it. Send a letter, then call. Don't wait for the answers. Nobody's interested in this issue as much as you are. So the energy has to come from you. Don't rely on promises. 
people say all kinds of things, especially politicians. Even if they meant it at the moment, they might not commit to the worst later. Check everything and only trust what has already happened. Uh, so much about uh, this uh, Jimmy Wells' is $500. Hit them where it hurts. Bring every issue to publicity. Be open. Don't let your work be smothered in the dark. Public discussions have more influence on political processes than you would expect. In politics, you never know. Everything may turn around in a moment. Grand schemes tend to fail. Plans fall apart without warning. Everything is possible. You might even get lucky. <laughs>